Welcome to Crimson News. First at four, I'm Mark Hanrahan. We'll get to Whitney in one moment. First, we start with the efforts to help parents find formula as a nationwide shortage continues. We're talking about baby formula behind me here. These are the first shipments of formula arriving from Germany today. They're an essential part of the Biden administration's plan to get formula back into the hands of panicked parents all across the country. The Air Force cargo plane carried 39 tons of formula into the U.S. That is enough to fill more than a half a million bottles. The shipment included specialty formula for babies with allergies to cow's milk. That formula was manufactured in the Nestle plant in Switzerland. The shipments cannot come fast enough for parents, though. At least four babies have been hospitalized in South Carolina because of complications related to the shortage. The White House, of course, scrambling to bring relief to parents all across the U.S. struggling to find formula. The shortage worsened when the nation's largest domestic formula manufacturing plant was shut down back in February after a whistleblower raised safety concerns. Federal officials say Abbott Nutrition's Michigan facility may resume operations in the coming days. However, it'll take about two months before product is ready for delivery. In the meantime, the U.S. is currently relying on these shipments to support at-risk children. This particular shipment is going to be distributed immediately to hospitals and clinics uh, around the country. So it's just a matter of getting it to the distribution center, getting the distribution center to put it in a truck. The truck is going to deliver it. So I, you know, we're going to be seeing deliveries made in a matter of days. The Biden administration says a second flight with formula is scheduled to leave Germany soon and will be trucked to Pennsylvania when it arrives in the U.S. The Defense Production Act has also been invoked to allow Abbott and formula company Rickett to receive priority orders of raw materials to increase productions. And while you're looking for formula, just a warning. The Federal Trade Commission is tracking reports of online scammers tricking parents into buying expensive formula that never arrives. So before you pay, make sure to check out the company or the product. And if you use a credit card, you can sometimes get your money back if you ordered something but didn't receive it. Also, search rather your local resources. That's the latest on the baby formula shortage. For now, Whitney, we'll send things back to you. All right, Mark, thank you very much. Also today, gas prices in Spokane have jumped way up. This is just in the last week. According to Gas Buddy, the average price per gallon went up 21 cents compared to just last Monday. Right now, the average gas station in Spokane is charging 4.88 a gallon. And to put that into perspective, gas is $1.62 a gallon higher than it was just one year ago. Statewide, the average price here in Washington is over 5.15 a gallon. That's up almost 18 cents from just last week. And across the border in Idaho, the average cost right now is $4.60 a gallon, up almost 11 cents from last week. Now today, President Biden addressed the rising price at the pump during remarks from Japan. The president says gas is in a state of transition right now, being impacted by several factors, including the situation in Russia and Ukraine, as well as increased demand for the Memorial Day weekend and post-COVID. In the meantime, the national average now is at 4.57 a gallon. And with rising prices, the Biden administration is considering an emergency declaration to help ease the diesel shortage in the U.S. It would allow a release of fuel from a stockpile that is rarely ever used. It's called the Northeast Home Heating Oil Reserve, and diesel has only been pulled from it once before, which was in the aftermath of Superstorm Sandy back in 2012. It cost about $5.50 a gallon for diesel right now. That's 75 cents more than this time last year. All right, let's take a look at weather. Clouds have been moving in throughout the afternoon. No raindrops really here uh, to speak of in the Spokane area. Meteorologist Jeremy Lagoo is joining us now from outside. So, Jeremy, do we need to be worried about storms or rain this evening? Uh, you know, Whitney, maybe a little bit of rain. When it comes to storms, we have some warm weather. It's relatively warm right now. But what's going on is we just don't quite have the energy. We don't have that big cold air sink overhead. So I don't think we have to worry too much about storms getting strong. We sit at 63 degrees under most of the cloudy skies here in Spokane right now. Not too terribly bad, but you don't have to go far to find some of that moisture. And look, you can see this kind of working its way toward us. A couple of rumbles of thunder so far, but nothing overly widespread. And I don't really expect those storms to get too much stronger. Zooming in, you can see now this band moving towards Spokane County. Basically, what we're waiting on to give this a little enhancement is some colder air and a little disturbance to move by overhead. That does happen later on this evening. Watch how this plays out. These showers move through and then watch how it all kind of spins and moves down to the south. That's a short wave of energy that kind of pushes this all out and helps us dry out for tomorrow. But tomorrow, it's all about the high cloud cover across the region. Likely we do get a little bit of rain, but not too worried about it. 
Temperatures fall down into the 40s tonight, not all that bad. And by tomorrow afternoon, we start our warm up back in the mid 60s and a few 70s across the region. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much. Witness statements and high quality security video help Spokane police identify and arrest a shooting suspect who is a known gang member. Krem 2 has gotten an exclusive look at that video. Dwayne Delaney facing multiple charges now, including attempted murder and assault. Spokane County Court documents say a man matching Delaney's description shot at two women who were standing outside of a North Spokane home just last week. Now, neither of them was hurt, but they told police they recognized the suspect as Delaney. They claimed they were the target due to an ongoing gang, gang conflict. Investigators say Delaney is a known gang member. He's now in custody at Spokane County Jail on a $250,000 bond. A 14-year-old Wenatchee girl has drowned after being washed away in the Antioch River in Chelan County over the weekend. According to the Sheriff's Office there, deputies were called to the Lake Creek Campground on Sunday for a water rescue. When they arrived, a 20-year-old man was found stranded on a rock in the middle of the river. A large rescue operation was then sent out to find the missing girl. Hours later, a helicopter crew was able to locate her in fast-moving water downstream. She was pronounced dead at the scene. One person has died after a shooting at a Montana campground. According to the Lincoln County Sheriff's Office there in Montana, deputies received a report of a shooting. It was just before 3 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. It happened at the Alexander Creek Campground near Libby. Deputies arrested one man who's now been identified as Gary Douglas Seaman. They say he is the suspect. As early as tomorrow, new downtown parking meters could go into effect in Spokane. All of this coming with several updates in the city of Spokane hopes it will ease some of the downtown parking process. Krem 2's Janelle Finch is here now with a quick preview of what you need to know. The city of Spokane just finished phase one of installing these new parking meters downtown. These meters are designed to make parking easier and more convenient. With that in mind, you are now able to use coin, mobile payment, or credit or debit cards to pay for parking. You know, I'm kind of old school, and it's like usually you put in, you know, dimes, quarters, nickels, and here you can actually use a, a credit card or a debit card. And I thought, wow, that's new school. We're definitely in the 21st century. I thought that was, you know, actually a good thing. You know. This is the first time since the late 1990s the city is updating its parking system. Old meters allowed you to use coins or the Passport parking app to pay for parking. You are still able to use the Passport app on these meters, but you will now have the added option of using the Park Mobile app. Over the next few years, these meters will soon become the downtown standard for on-street parking. In Spokane, Janelle Finch, Crem 2 News. Well, still to come tonight, they served our nation, and now we can celebrate and serve them. Krem 2 traveled with Inland Northwest Honor Flight to tell their stories and give these veterans a voice. When we come back, we know that their coming home this time is much different, and we've got a special Honor Flight coverage of that trip that took them to the monuments built for their service. That's coming up after the break.